This is the end of the reading by S. Desai. Demographic Deposit Dividend in Debt. अब उधर ये बात करते हैं कि अगर आप दूसरी कंट्रीज की तुलना में देखें जैसे कि चाइना जैसे कि ईस्ट एशिया और हमारी कंट्री को देखें तो हमारी कंट्री में जो फर्टिलिटी डिक्लाइन हुआ वह स्लो हुआ और क्योंकि फर्टिलिटी डिक्लाइन स्लो हुआ तो जो डिपेंडेंसी रेशियोज थे वो भी धीरे धीरे फॉल करे डिपेंडेंसी रेशियोज आर आई मीन पीपल हु प्रपोर्शन ऑफ पॉपुलेशन विच इज नॉट वर्किंग so in case of fertility is declining slowly means fertility is still higher means uh, children uh, the, the the rate at which children are uh, are getting birth that is higher so children are dependent population so that is higher so dependency ratios are going to fall lesser if the number of births are going to be huge <clears throat> so you cannot expect children to work right so the dependency ratios they were falling slowly at the initial phase the demographic dividend because fertility was declining while well, if you look at the end phase of the fertility uh, of the demographic dividend you will find is that in those countries dependency ratio suddenly increased a lot uh, because of the elderly population getting huge but in our country it will increase slowly because there was a slow decrease in fertility so there was a slow decrease in the dependency ratio and there will be the high uh, sorry there will be the slow increase in the dependency ratio also he took about two two things he said this that if you look at un estimates you'll find is that un says that india is going to reach its fertility uh, replacement fertility level by around 2040 as the size aap kehte hain ki ye zaruri nahi hai ki hum 2040 se pehle फर्टिलिटी रिप्लेसमेंट लेवल को नहीं पा सकते ऐसा क्यों कहते हैं कहते यूएन के अपने एस्टिमेट्स को भी देख लीजिए सन 2000 में हम 3.3 का टोटल फर्टिलिटी रेट था और 2010 में 2.66 का फर्टिलिटी रेट है अगर आप इसी रेट को देखें तो हम 2040 में रिप्लेसमेंट लेवल ऑफ फर्टिलिटी से पहले ही पहुंच सकते ट्वेंटी फोर्टी से पहले ही रिप्लेसमेंट लेवल ऑफ फर्टिलिटी से पहुंच सकते ये कहते हैं एंड सेकेंड रीजन विच ही गिवस for the for that indian fertility could actually reach its reach its replacement level before 2040 is what is called the tempo effect there are delayed marriages now people are not getting married early some people are getting married in 30s 40s also so naturally if they are getting married late they will have their first child also late and that is I mean, there will be the postponement of births for around a decade. जो पहले लोग 21 साल में 18 साल में शादी कर लेते थे, अब normal है 28, 29, 30 साल में शादी करना. तो around a decade का फर्क पड़ जाएगा. उसकी वजह से भी fertility decline होगी. और वो कहते हैं कि इसको हम tempo effect कहते हैं. और इसकी वजह से भी हो सकता है कि हम 2040 से पहले ही अपना replacement level पा लें. fertility ka replacement level bar right so because of this fertility decline is going to speed up and we might reach our replacement level even earlier than this pehli baat to wo ye kehte hain is regarding mein pehla point ye tha dusra point wo kehte hain ki aap agar sirf ye dekhte hain dependency ratios mein ki kitni working age population hai aur kitni non working age population then this is not the right way to judge they are saying if you you can't just focus on how much of the proportion of population is working to the total population you can't just look at that ratio even within the working age population are everyone working is everyone working no you look at women so in our country there is there is very low women participation rates as compared to the other countries and even among youth there is high unemployment jo hum likhte hain na 15 to 65 years is the working age population actually do you think that people from 15 to 25 they are working or they are working in nice jobs they are earning a lot right they are spending their time in education so that is not a wrong thing to say but what they are saying is <clears throat> you need to look at the proportion of workers to non workers also 
इन द वर्किंग एज पॉपुलेशन आप सिर्फ ये नहीं देख सकते हाउ मच प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ द वर्किंग एज पॉपुलेशन इज देयर टू द टोटल पॉपुलेशन दैट इज नॉट इनफ यू ऑल्सो हैव टू सी दट विद इन द वर्किंग एज पॉपुलेशन हाउ मच प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ पीपल आर एक्चुअली वर्किंग and how much of them are not working right so this is the point which i have written that is in india labor markets are characterized by low female workforce participation rates as compared to the other countries and we also have the problem of high youth unemployment that is the woh kehte hain ki agar aap low women workforce participation rate ko dekhein aap there are uh, evidences which are given in your reading about the female workforce participation rate which you can write it from there those those numbers i look at few important points <clears throat> he makes a very interesting point he says if you look at women's workforce participation rate and the education levels you will find that there is the inverse u shaped kind of relationship there is an inverse u shaped kind of relationship right like this so when let's say you have education here and you have female workforce participation so you were having you were at the zero level of education and then you started having education then of course the female workforce participation rate is going to fall because you are spending your time in education right then not until you have passed let's say class 12 your participation rate is going to increase because just by passing primary education it's not that you will be getting office jobs and some other kinds of jobs are completely close to you for example jobs of the uh, i mean you do not want to do manual labor i'm talking about females so they do not want to do manual labor they are little educated primary education at least they have so they do not want to uh, do manual labor and some other semi skilled jobs are close to them for example drivers it's a semi skilled job but that is close to them but after they have gone beyond 12th standard their participation rates is going to increase now they can get uh, employable i mean they they can get better jobs let's say in offices so there is an inverse relationship so that is one thing other thing is it's also a very interesting point so if the household income is increasing then people uh, uh, will generally think why do women have to work why do they have to go outside home why do they have to earn because it is seen that if they are going to work in offices when already the household income is enough they have to work in offices they will be uh, thrown open to abuses by sometimes male members also and that is like a disrespect for the family so if anyone is uh, saying any anything to women of our family that is like a shame on our family that is like a disrespect for our family so people will say if our household income is enough you do not have to work uh, uh, so because of these reasons female workforce participation rate is lesser that is one thing yeah they are in the working age but they are not working but again saying this that women are not working they have given a very important point this is this nss is like i mean they are taking up only those kinds of work which which they can measure not every kind of activity could be marketed but that doesn't mean that they cannot they are not working mm. so especially women they spend a lot of time in those unpaid economic activities but without them you can't you can't actually work male members can't work without that unpaid work given by women those household work unpaid but you don't call that as work because you do not want to measure this in gdp this one thing so they say that if if you can tap these resources 
if you can tap the entire female workforce and they also start working, I mean, we can actually reap the benefits of demographic dividend. So they say that you do not have to just look at the total working age population upon total population. You also have to see how much of the working age population itself is working. Uh, secondly, they say that there is the problem of declining employment in youth. They say this, that you look at youth, for example, 15, 21, 15 to 25 and all, they're spending their time in education, which itself is not a bad thing. It's a very good thing because they're, they're building up skills. That's a long-term skill, right? That's a human capital formation. So they're investing in that. They're investing in that. So that is a good thing. That is, uh, that is uh, the education levels are rising. But again, we need to take up steps so that uh, uh, youth unemployment, whatever it is, it could be tackled. So at least those people who want to work in youth, they should be getting proper jobs. Those who are those who are getting education, that is completely fine. Of course, they can't work at that time. But those who want to work, they should be getting proper jobs. They should be adding to the productivity of the economy. So those steps should be taken. So there are two things which we have learned in this recording. One, that India can actually reach its replacement level even before 2040 for the reasons he has told. And you do not have to look only at the total working age population upon total population. You also have to look at what is happening in the working age population. Are all workers in the working age population working or there are some non-workers also? Right? So uh, this is what I wanted to do in this class. But Thank you.